Hello, brothers and sisters. I'm Pastor Stephen Jurdy at Zion Lutheran Church in Wausau and Bethany Lutheran Church in Anawa, here to share with you a word at the middle of the week. Tomorrow is October 31st, and you know what that means. Reformation Day. That's right. Tomorrow is not only Halloween, but also in the life of the church, it is Reformation Day, the day when we celebrate the Lutheran Reformation. And what I thought I would do today was talk with you about that Reformation and start a new series here at the middle of the week in which we talk about the Lutheran Church. What is the Lutheran Church? Why is it called Lutheran? And how is it different from other churches? First, let's begin with that word Lutheran. Basically, Lutheran is a nickname, and it's a nickname for our church that we have received because there's a man in our history who is especially important by the name of Martin Luther. His teachings have been so foundational for our church that people at one point began calling us Lutheran. And that name has just sort of stuck as a shorthand way of referring to who we are. So really the question is, who is Martin Luther and why are his teachings so important? And what does he have to do with October 31st and this thing called Reformation? Well, Reformation is a word that simply means the new shaping or the, the shaping anew of a thing. Uh, something that is reformed is given a new shape, a shape that is perhaps like an earlier shape. Um, it is given a, a new life that is considered better than the life it had. And that, in fact, is what the Lutheran Reformation was doing. Martin Luther, on October 31st in 1517, posted a statement, several statements, uh, for debate in his town of Wittenberg, Germany. This statement is called the 95 Theses. He had 95 statements that he posted for debate. And the whole point of those theses was to identify problems in the life of the church and to hopefully lead people to think about solutions for those problems through debate at the university where Martin Luther worked as a professor. He was a priest and a monk in the Catholic Church, but he also was a professor. And so he wanted these statements to be debated. Now, what were the statements about? The statements were about something we call indulgences. An indulgence is an act in the Catholic Church, the Roman Catholic Church, by which people do something. Either they give a certain amount of money or they undertake a certain religious practice. And in exchange for having done that, they are promised that certain penalties for sin are now removed from them. And Martin Luther was getting very frustrated with the practice of indulgences because he, as a priest, would often sit in his little confessional booth to hear confessions. People would come to him and confess their sins. But before he posted these 95 theses, there were many people who were coming to him with letters of indulgence, that is, letters they had received from the church that told them because they had done certain things or given certain amounts of money, they now had a full removal of the penalties of sin. And so therefore, they were telling Father Luther, Father Martin, we don't need to come to confession anymore. We don't need to be telling you our sins, we have it all taken care of because of what we did here. And that bothered him. It bothered him for a couple reasons. It bothered him first because he thought people should go to confession. They should have the consolation of confessing their sins and hearing forgiveness personally spoken to them. It also bothered him, however, because there was a deeper biblical problem to what they were doing. Martin Luther was a man who loved the writings of the prophets and the apostles, the prophets being the preachers of Israel in the Old Testament, preachers who preached the word of God before Christ came, and the apostles being followers of Jesus Christ who preached the gospel after his resurrection, <clears throat> and a little bit uh, during his life as well. They, they were preachers 
uh, in the service of Christ during his life before the crucifixion, but then they also became preachers and leaders of the church after his resurrection. Well, Luther loved their writings, and what he had found in the writings of the prophets and the apostles was that forgiveness or the removal of penalty for sin did not come to people in exchange for anything they did. It only gave, came to them for the sake of Jesus Christ alone. And there's one particular passage in the writings of the apostles in the Holy Bible that has sort of become the touchstone verse for proclaiming that good news. And it comes from Romans chapter 3, uh, verses 21 and 22, and I'm going to read it to you now. This is St. Paul writing. Paul was an, an apostle of Jesus. He has a fascinating life, which uh, we could go over in, a, in another video sometime. But here's what Paul wrote. And he wrote this several decades, a few decades after the resurrection of Jesus. Just a few decades. He wrote, But now, apart from the law, the righteousness of God has been disclosed and is attested by the law and the prophets the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe. For there is no distinction, since all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, they are now justified by his grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. They are just, and that's actually reading through verse 24. They are justified by grace as a gift. So justified, righteousness, those are, those are some big terms. Basically, this is what it all comes down to. To be righteous is to be everything that God wants you to be. And what that passage teaches us is that God looks on you and considers you to be everything that he wants you to be for Jesus' sake alone. Not because of things that you do, certainly not because of certain things you buy, uh, through the church, which is what was happening at the time of the Luther, of Luther, but for the sake of Jesus alone, because Jesus died for you and shed his blood for you, because Jesus is now risen, God, for his sake, because Jesus is so worthy, because the gift of his love is so great, God looks upon you and says, you are everything that I want you to be when you have Jesus. When you have Jesus as your own, trusting in him, receiving him as your savior, you're everything I want you to be. You may have a lot of sin to your name still, and it's good to confess it so that you may hear that that sin is forgiven for Jesus' sake alone. But even though you continue to struggle with sin daily, even though there's all this sin crying out against you, and uh, saying, you did something wrong there. Even though the law of God itself says, you are a sinner. Nevertheless, Jesus enters in as both God and man. And he says, for the sake of my blood, I'm canceling that guilt. I am forgiving that sin. That is the bedrock of the church. That is the message that started what we call the Reformation and led to the Catholic Church of Luther's time being reformed. And in the end, that's what the Lutheran Church is. The Lutheran Church is simply the Catholic Church reformed. And by reformed, what we mean is it's the Catholic Church that has recovered this fantastic teaching, this amazing divine teaching from above, that our sins are forgiven for Christ's sake alone, and therefore, God counts you as everything he wants you to be, even now, even before you have become everything he wants you to be, for Jesus' sake alone. For Jesus' sake, he forgives your sins and marks you as a child whom he will raise on the last day and give eternal life. That's an amazing teaching. And uh, it led to several changes within the church. Martin Luther didn't necessarily intend all of those changes, although he was happy to see them happen. Uh, Luther certainly did not set out to reform the church initially. 
Uh, in fact, he didn't even know that his theses, those 95 statements that he posted on that, this door uh, of a church in his town, were going to become so famous. But at that time, there was a printer, uh, a man with a printing press who was looking for things to print and sell. And he looked at those theses and he thought, these will sell. And so he took those and on his own authority, it appears, uh, started printing them and disseminating them and, and thus the Lutheran Reformation was born. I'm going to just read to you uh, the very first one of those 95 theses. Uh, this is again Luther's own hand. And this is what he has to say about it. Actually, I might read to you the first three. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, amen. Number one, this is the first of the 95 Theses. Number one, when our Lord and Master Jesus Christ said repent, he willed the entire life of believers to be one of repentance. Number two, this word, that is this will of Jesus, that the entire life of the believer be one of repentance, especially that word repentance. This word cannot be understood as referring to the sacrament of penance, that is, confession and satisfaction as administered by the clergy. So there he's saying, when our Lord wills the entire life to be a life of repentance, he cannot, he cannot be only referring or referring um, to the act of going to confession and confessing your sins and hearing that you're forgiven through Christ alone, and it certainly did not refer to that practice as it was being practiced at Luther's time. However, number three, it does not mean solely inner repentance. Such inner repentance is worthless unless it produces various outward mortifications of the flesh. So he's saying uh, our Lord intends the entire life to be a life of repentance. That doesn't simply mean going to confession and hearing and confessing your sins to the priest or the pastor. But at the same time, it also doesn't mean just inner repentance that we just sort of feel sorry and, and sort of think through that we're forgiven for Jesus' sake. There also is a life that works its way out into our actions and how we live as a result of repentance. I give you those first three statements because it reminds us that there were very, not only just very serious things that Luther carried, cared about when he wrote these 95 Theses, something that he sees as encapsulating the whole Christian life. But it also reminds us that, that Lutheranism isn't, isn't what people sometimes think it is. Sometimes Lutheranism is accused of being sort of an individualistic religion where everyone just sort of thinks through uh, what they want to think, or they just, have, they just focus on their own inner experiences and the sacraments and the life of the church don't matter. Luther does say life, the life of repentance is not simply the sacramental life of the church, but he also says it's not simply the inner life of the believer. And so that sets us up for a much bigger discussion as to what the Lutheran church is. How does this simple biblical teaching, this teaching of the prophets and the apostles, that we are forgiven for Christ's sake alone, that we are everything God wants us to be for Christ's sake alone, how does that teaching shape the whole life of the Christian believer and the life of the church? That's what we'll be talking about in the weeks to come. On each Wednesday, we'll take another little piece of the Lutheran church and explain what it is talking about. And um, we'll hopefully dispel some myths about the Lutheran church in the process. Uh, this will be a series of videos you might want to share with others, those who are not Lutheran, but who want to learn about Lutheranism or who need to learn about Lutheranism. Uh, and it's certainly something I hope that you continue to listen to and to watch. The Lord's peace be with you and grant you a blessed day this day and always. Thanks.